the the the, the balance uh, of having 17 alarms to turn off in the morning is not a good way to wake up either. <laughs> um, wake up angrily. <laughs> You yeah, know, it's, a, it's but, a bit of a shock. To, you could you could say that. You know, <laughs> you, I try to have something gentle on as an alarm, but then when you have people put this, I used to do that. You put music on, like let me put the loudest thing on that I can find. Let me put the the volume up to ten, oh. and then you're just sleeping and everything is great. And then, and then, and then, and then, you're like, oh my god! Podcast time, everybody. Mike Tech Studio. Podcast episode number 34. All right, everybody. Thank you for tuning into the next episode of the Mike Tech Studios podcast. Today, today we're going to go in a little bit of a different direction. This is an interesting guest that we have uh, with our topic is going to be sleep like a boss, healthy sleep success for insomniacs. Our guest today is actually a sleep coach, Lauren DeFell. Lauren Thank you for tuning in as well, stopping by and having a chat with us today. Thank you, Michael. I really appreciate being on your podcast and addressing your audience. Um, sleep is something that is so important and many people don't prioritize it um, in our modern, busy, productive lifestyle. So it's, it's my honor to be like the Lorax of sleep. The Lorax. <laughs> and, and- <laughs> Yeah. I feel sorry for that guy. Well, that's <laughs> I love him. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, it's it's he he did not get enough love. He should have gotten a sequel. Um I I feel that this is important because again, you know, a lot of the people that listen, it's creative content, business, marketing, you know, just just professional things. But being a professional myself, I know a majority of my life. You know, I I have found it really difficult to achieve a proper, uh, excuse me, can't even speak. Look at that, can't sleep, can't speak. <laughs> a proper <laughs> uh, work-life balance and sleep is really one of those things. And you know, when I was actually trying to research, you know, reference questions to what we could talk about here today and ask you, because this is not something that I normally venture into. You know, this isn't about SEO marketing. It's not about podcasting. This is about... Mm-hmm. Not only am I not an expert in this, but I I was trying to figure out maybe some interesting questions to ask. And, you know, I saw result after result for baby sleep coaches and pregnancy sleep coaches just, you know, over and over again. So just to make sure that I know, as well as any of the listeners tuning in know before we really start this up, what, what, what kind of specific sleep coaching do you tend to really focus or, or specialize in? My focus is on adults. Um, I, I don't focus so much on children. As you mentioned, there is already, there's a pretty big niche yes. of women who focus on, on helping um, babies and children with their sleep. Uh, but adults need to prioritize their sleep as well. And that's something that we're not taught throughout our lives. Maybe in high school, you had home ec, you have gym class to get you some exercise. Nobody teaches you about sleep and sleep is as important, sometimes more important than, than your exercise and your eating. Or the three of those things are the three most important things and sleep really gets left behind. So um, I focus on adults who are chronically fatigued and who are either having chronic sleeping problems or on and off sleeping problems. And this will be snowballing and having an effect on their professional and personal life. So we, we take a holistic approach and, um, and that's the person who I'm, I'm helping most with my program. It's, it's basically the version of myself from the past because when I was going through insomnia in my 20s, I went through five years of insomnia. I can tell you it was horrible. (laughs) And I spent five years looking for the kind of help that I'm offering today. I really, really had a hard time finding a comprehensive um, source of help, you know? Mm -hmm. I did 
of course, I went to my doctor. I had a naturopathic doctor. I went to a Chinese medicine practitioner, um, a massage therapist. I did cognitive behavioral therapy. And what I found it, all of those pieces were important, but none of them looked at all parts of my life. So my goal is to bring all of those things together and to give someone a really, really comprehensive support to, to helping them get through their sleep problems. Cause it also won't be exactly the same for every person because all of our lives are different. And yeah, there's, there's room for that in my program. It's, it's part structure, part um, individualized. Interesting. Well, I can tell that this is going to be an interesting interview because we're going to have to jump all over the place here. We, I had a, I had somewhat of a of a schedule here of questions, but we can let let let's piggyback off of um, you know the, the the adults with insomniacs factor. So it really does split uh, and curtail on a couple of, of questions that I have. So we're gonna have to fragment them here and there. Mm-hmm. When when you are speaking with adults that are having just difficult sleeping problems and again i want to i want to kind of um focus and prioritize you know professionals and 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 those that are really have those heavy workloads um Mm -hmm. you you have a lot of experience with i don't want to say ceos because it doesn't necessarily have to be that but folks that are just really hard you know grinding on their industry um you know are, are there specific industries that you see more sleep deficits or fatigue in that are like at unhealthy levels that you just you keep seeing this this same result Mm -hmm. again and again and again this specific industry or this type of level of management or professional that just seems to be burned out from not or inadequate sleep practices yeah i would say in general jobs that are never ending like a 24-hour um, type of job. For instance, I used to work in a hotel. Hotel is always there. Yes, you work in specific hours, sort of, but if you manage the hotel, you, someone might need to ask you something at any moment. Um, I work with quite a few people in marketing and SEO management, social media management. Um, their jobs are similar to my old hotel job in that it feels like it's all the time it can be all the time right those types of jobs where you can make your own hours as well so then people often give themselves work to do at night um so i see that impacting people's sleep um any i could say high stress job but it's also it also really depends on how the person manages their own stress so if someone's not very good at managing their own stress or they haven't developed um, stress management that's working for them, Mm -hmm. then their job will feel more stressful regardless of what the actual job is. An insomniac, you can say, is often someone who is a little bit more anxious, someone who tends to have more anxiety. Mm -hmm. Um, so that person, it might not be the job itself, but maybe the social interactions that go with it, um, might also add to that person's stress. And I don't like saying that stress gives you bad sleep because that's not always true. In fact, um, but being chronically stressed is something that can make us feel chronically tired and feeling chronically tired makes us make different decisions about what we're going to do with our day. And some of those decisions are what have a large impact on our sleep. And I, and I think it also has a large impact on our personality and, and like you had touched uh-huh. on as far as for decision-making, if I'm hungry, I'm probably going to respond to you a lot differently than if I'm not hungry. Um, <laughs> right. People like to have Snickers on a holster, you know, sometimes if they know I haven't had lunch. And if you're tired, you're more likely to be hungry and you're more likely to have cravings if you didn't have uh, adequate sleep. So those two things tie together very closely. Oh, see, that's a bad mix. And then add, add a little <laughs> bit of, uh, add a little bit of uh, 24 hour, you know, workloads that we're talking about here. And it gets even worse. Uh-huh. Um, you know, it's funny, because that reminds me of I had, um, 
I had a job with a home services company several years ago, and I was I was very happy to be with that company initially. And you know, uh, as it progressed, there was a there was a, a high workload, but I didn't feel like personally uh, that it that it was something that I couldn't handle. You know, you just know, hey, this is a heavy workload, but uh, there was the support emotionally professionally and you had the respect that was you know necessary in order to be able to do your job and slowly but surely it ended up becoming a what we, we talked about maintaining that work-life uh, balance earlier um long story short uh we're dealing with offshore uh developers um that mm. you know i i am always quoted as saying my 10 o'clock at night was there eight o'clock in the morning so and not only that we were providing roughly uh almost a 24-hour service a very late night or early uh service calls so mm -hmm. you got you got techs and addicts trying to take readings website isn't working they're calling you you're in the middle, you know, you're, you're deep into something else. You're trying to have dinner. You're sleeping. Maybe, maybe you, you, you get back finally yeah. at eight o'clock, you're passing out. And, yeah. uh, there is no work life balance. There wasn't, there, there wasn't a healthy amount of sleep and it was always a very short fused, you know, there, it just didn't, it seemed like everything was constantly broken. And when you have those lines of diminishing returns, lack of sleep, constant work, work, you know that that workflow and and work requirements dramatically increase it's not a good combination you you actually can't sleep well because you know that hey i gotta go do something else you know your mind needs to have that sort of relax uh, yeah and, and and i know i've i've talked with many i mean entrepreneurs they're always about the hustle i'll sleep when i'm dead and you know all that type oh. of <laughs> But that's what happens. Yeah. You work yourself very close to the bone. And and I really think that they should rephrase that because it is very self, very much working yourself close to death because if you don't listen to the needs of your body the same way with breathing, liquids, oxygen, food, you know, pain, sleep mm -hmm. deprivation is a very, you know, very real thing. And I, and I know, you know, with some of your content, I was able to take a look at as well. I mean, you, not only do you eat, sleep and breathe that no pun intended but now it kind of is yeah. <laughs> but it, it is something that holistically that you you know you have a background in practicing uh yoga and meditation your focus as a sleep coach is non-pharmaceutically assisted let's just say you know you want to do mm -hmm. as holistically aided as possible and i really respect that i i am um I do have celiac disease. I didn't want to say that I suffer with it, but it it, it does make you make different decisions and choices uh, with yeah. foods. And what things irritate you may actually disrupt healthy sleeping and and procedures. But you know, going through, do you do you tend to find uh, men or women, not to make it sexist, but do you tend to find men or women that have uh, worse problems with proper, healthy, adequate sleeping? Ah. Uh statistically women have a little bit more problem with sleeping than men do i think the the way that women interact with their emotions maybe plays into that a little bit mm -hmm. our emotional compass is quite loud for women not saying that it's not in men but that yeah we, we do interact differently <laughs> And it entirely depends on the person. I of do course. work with um, men as well as my clients. Um, I tend to focus my marketing a little bit towards women only because women are more likely to seek help for health problems than men are. Again, that's not always true. That's just my, my general feel. And because I'm a woman, I think I have more women gravitate towards me. There's that. Um, I wanted to touch a little bit on what you said about the holistic approach, not involving, um, obviously not involving medications, but sure, sure. sometimes people actually, a lot of the time people ask me either clients or through social media, what kind of supplements do you, I recommend for sleep? My holistic approach to that is if you're needing a supplement for sleeping, then there's something up with your sleeping right. <laughs> right there's something off right right and i hear a lot of people i have interesting conversations i'll tell you but people will tell me about their sleeping problems and they'll be like it's fine i don't have sleeping problems anymore because i take cbd 
and melatonin every day. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, <laughs> but what happens if you don't take the CBD and the melatonin, <laughs> you know? You don't want to know. Um, Resort back to the Snickers comment <laughs> from per previous. Right. And that's a personal choice. Like with anything, do we want to use a medication? Do we want to use supplements or do we want to dig a little bit deeper and see really what's behind that? Because mm -hmm. anything that we're taking to solve a problem and it's an external thing. And now we're relying on this external thing is covering up the real root. Right. Um, and for me sleeping, um, it's, it's a symptom. It's not sleeping itself is not a problem. If you're having problems sleeping, it's a sign of something else. It's just a sign that there is something off in your life. And sometimes it's obvious. You can see what thing is off in your life. And sometimes it's not. And, and it, it's always going to be more than one thing, to be honest, mm -hmm. because by the time your sleep is affected, you know, it's like the straw that broke the camel's back. Um, so there's, there will be definitely more than one thing. So yeah, that's where it gets fun and interesting. And, um, it's, it's, it's really cool to see when, when you get to do coaching with somebody, you develop a really intimate relationship with that person because you spend a lot of time talking and getting to know, um, getting to know each other. And then sometimes at first you, you see a few really obvious things. Okay. This is what we're going to work on first. Mm -hmm. And then as you get to know each other better, and you see patterns of things coming up and there's a little bit more honesty that comes through and more relaxation in the sessions. Then once you're through the superficial sleep things, like some of the, um, you know, healthy sleep habits, mm -hmm. we call our sleep hygiene. We work on those initially because I can see right away which sleep hygiene habits are off in someone's life. Mm -hmm. And then we get to like, what's really happening here? <laughs> Once you get through all of that, through the superficial stuff and you get to a place where you can be more honest in the sessions, then you see what's really, really happening. Because when we're asleep, our conscious mind is asleep with us and our subconscious mind is awake and active it never rests. It's the most amazing tool that we have, I think, because it guides our life. It guides our whole life, our subconscious. It guides the way we react to things. It's our autopilot. It guides our emotions, our dreams. That's what will wake you up at night. If there's something off in your life, it's your subconscious waking you up at night saying, hey, look at this. You need to pay attention to this. You're not paying attention to this. So the subconscious mind and, and getting into dreams and all of that is, is um, one of the things about sleep that makes it super interesting and like a really, really fun area of coaching and health. Well, it definitely sounds like you cut past the first date pleasantries, you know, about, oh, I have no <laughs> problems. And then you go to like sleep intervention, you know, like, all right, <laughs> we love you. We're going to be honest with you. You have a sleep problem. You're like, no, I don't. Um, <laughs> and, you know, and that's the thing. I, I, I feel that not only do people... You know, and, and the reason why I asked your experience is, you know, you're going to have different responses based on male or female interactions. Most guys, and, and that's why I thought this would be a really interesting episode to kind of like, you know, side pivot to. It's it's not that it's off the beaten path. I think it's a situation personally and professionally. I mean, I know I deal with it. I'm, I, I'm not going to lie about that. But I think it is something that if you if more folks listen to what it is that's going on, they might be able to be more honest and open with themselves about how to assess the situation. So, you know, a lot of times, you, you, like you're talking about, there are previous folks that, yeah, hey, I'm taking, you know, melatonin and I'm fine. It allows me to sleep. Well, why does it need to come to that? You know, there, there is a, there's a symptom there, mm -hmm. but if somebody isn't honest or maybe it becomes so transparent in their life that they don't even think about it. Right. We, we, yeah. we do things on a daily basis. A lot basis. of people yeah. get used to it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I forgot that I took this. Oh, I forgot that I have, I have this. So oh, I forgot, you know, I've taken melatonin for example, and just to see what it does. And for me, 
uh, it makes me very groggy. Uh, it, it, mm-hmm. will, it will work the first night, but I have a very delayed uh, reaction to anything. So, for example, if I go to a if I go to a dentist to get any dental work, they mm-hmm. actually have to give me within the legal limits, like, and sometimes it's gone beyond that local injections in order for me to not feel anything. My body has a very high a uh, threshold for shutting down, for for not wanting to shut down, right? So mm, as soon yeah. as that happens, it's it, it, it runs into adrenaline mode, pulls everything back up. I do not like to be drunk. <laughs> I do not. It's very much, you know, anybody, they know I'm like, you know, Wolverine or the Hulk. It is very much eh, your body's immediate response. Something's going on in the same manner that if I have been um, overtired, there have been many times where I have not gotten, I've worked full time overnight, you're doing contract freelance work that has me full during the day. There is a lack of sleep. And that same feeling is the same feeling that you get if you are intoxicated. Yeah. And my body knows how to deal with if I have, uh, if I haven't, let's say, if I, and I haven't had, I haven't drank in a while, but let's say that I had uh, the, levels of intoxication that would equal that exhaustion i Mm -hmm. my body would know how to deal with it it goes no this is chemical this is something that's induced you've had the proper amount of sleep you are during daytime hours or you know it's before 10 o'clock at night you know how to deal with this keep going and it's not because you're drunk and you go oh i can figure it out it's literally because your body i mean (laughs) I've abused it for years and years and years of not sleeping adequately, willingly or unwillingly. It kind of knows, it knows how to trudge along. So there have been times where, you know, driving or no, I haven't, you know, again, drinking and driving, that's not what I'm talking about, but being compromised to the point of proper, adequate, healthy sleeping and been able to still power through. But there is a, there's a, there's a cost to that. Yeah, there is a, a compromising. So right. it's, it's interesting because some of the studies done on w- the effect of sleep deprivation, they'll show the effect of sleep deprivation. But the interesting thing is that the subjects tested, they'll, they'll be asked, oh, how do you think that you did? And they think that they did pretty well. They don't think that their sleepiness or lack of sleep the night before had much effect on their performance. And then when you show the results of the test, you can see that there is definitely a difference in performance between um, the group who got eight hours of sleep for five nights in a row and the group who got five or six hours of sleep for eight nights in a row. And then there might be a third group in some studies who slept fine for four nights and then one night before the test, they stayed awake the whole night. It actually showed that the people who pulled an all-nighter, often studies show that the people who pull an all-nighter perform just as poorly as the people who slept five or six hours a night over a period of time. So if you're really cutting your sleep during your work week, so typically that would be your five days a week where you're like, okay, I'm really busy, and maybe you have kids and other obligations, you've got a really busy schedule lined up for the day, so you get up really early or you go to bed really late and you're on purpose cutting the sleep, then by the end of the week, you're as incapacitated as if you skipped a whole night of sleep. Right. Yeah, and then we try to catch up with our sleep on the weekends, but there is not really any way that your body can recuperate all the sleep that you lost. It can recuperate a little bit, but it won't. Things that you can't recuperate are the emotional processing from the previous days, um, any memories that might not have been stored properly in those days. And if those were your work days or you were, or you're in school and you're taking some kind of course, a memory that wasn't made properly is, is not made properly. You'll have to, if it's something you're studying, you'll just have to study it again. Well, that makes it difficult because I know that there have been many times where, and I mean, again, this is unavoidable in the business realm of things, but I'll get notes for, let's say a PowerPoint presentation or uh, some slight changes to a video editing project or even a voiceover that I'm, I mean, Notoriously, when I was freelancing, uh, when I first started out, you would have folks that would reach out to you. It would be four, five, even six o'clock Friday night, and they'd want it done first thing Saturday morning. And the... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, no, no, no. 
<laughs> well, you know, when you're when you're starting out, you know what I mean? You, you go, all yeah. right, I could do this, right? But you're not factoring the fact that you were at the end of a very long work week. You had just done eight, nine, 10, 12 hours of something during the day right now to, you know, to either pay the bills, get you along or, you know, whatever. And what I started realizing is that the folks that were paying the least were demanding the most and they were demanding it on your nights, your weekends. And I mean, not for nothing, what is somebody going to do first thing eight o'clock in the morning? Are they, are, do they need this? Because they're out golfing or doing something <laughs> right. else. Uh, you know, what, what a jerk. <laughs> right. You know, and that's now you, you obviously can't say that until you, you know, get, you know, collect the, the bill payment. But, but at the end of the day, you go, man, I'm burning myself out. I have got children, you know, that when I was helping them and being around them, it is very much a handful. Uh, they're, you know, at the time there were five and um, you have some that have night terrors. You have uh, some that pee to bed. You have some that, you know, just don't. You have five them. children? No, no, no. God children. So I. Oh, I, Okay. Definitely can relate to them as my own, um, but no, I have not been uh, that blessed. I am actually the oldest of five, and I wanted to have a little bit of peace and quiet through at some point in my life. So I, <laughs> you know, I can, I can, I can relate to that amount of of uh, party members. You know, uh, basically creating a football team or traveling somewhere. Uh, but I, I, I bring it up because it is difficult. You know, you do find yourself exhausted. I, I know parents that are. I uh, had a guest on who was a social media professional. Who, uh, she's a newer mother. Uh, there were several guests that are parents with one, two, three, or or more. You know, children, and it is very difficult to juggle that work life balance and not. Be he just drop dead tired, you know, by eight o'clock at night. And and I, I remember that, you know, uh, the, the oldest kid there, Adam, I'd end up just passing out in his bed. You know, he's sitting there playing the switch or whatever it is and, <laughs> you know, dealing with his little uh, sister, uh, two younger, youngest sisters or whatever it is, and just dealing with them and uh, mood swings and stuff like that, you know, after trying to sit and, and work through copy on your laptop or whatever for blog post or email. I mean, you just can't keep your eyes open. You're like, dude, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna crash out over here, you know? And when you were talking about not being able to catch up with that successful sleep habits, when I was working nonstop, um, you know, it did take a toll on how I was interacting personally with people. Yeah. Um, but also what I would do is I would basically have Thursdays as my try to clear what I can and catch up on, on sleep day because you'd be falling asleep at the desk. You yeah. you would be, uh, you know, you, you just driving, you know, you beep, oh, you're at a red light. Okay, now it's green, go, you know, stuff like that would just happen constantly. But uh -huh. um, I also generally have a paranoia of, which has happened numerous times, uh, critical key times in my life. I'm supposed to be at a meeting at eight and my alarm needs to go off at five and my phone is completely off or didn't ring and it's 8.30. And there was literally nothing that you can do except for, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. You know, and that, that PTSD, like Worst that. that <laughs> right. Like I do not go to sleep properly or at all for like the next several months because then you wake up panicking 10 o'clock and I, oh, I overslept. I, it's 10 o'clock at night. And uh, okay. And, and that is not healthy either. You know, yeah. and the 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 balance um, of having seventeen alarms to turn off in the morning is not a good way to wake up either. <laughs> um, wake up angrily. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's a, it's but, a bit of a shock. To, you could you could say that. You know, <laughs> you, I try to have something gentle on as an alarm, but then when you have people put this, I used to do that. You put music on, like let me put the loudest thing on that I can find. Let me put the the volume up to ten, oh. and then you're just sleeping, and everything is great. And, and you're like, oh my god! So growing up, we had my mom, who is the least morning person ever, in her. And then there'd be my sister and I when we were teenagers and trying to, the three of us trying to get the three of ourselves up <laughs> to go to work in school in the morning <laughs> it was a total comedy show because my mom snored like crazy and she does have a bit of sleep apnea actually. Her alarm would be so loud it would wake up all of us. But my sister yep. and I were also pro sleepers, um, especially as teenagers. We would, I'd sometimes hear it and my mom ha would have the radio. So it would be whatever the like rock radio station. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it could be like Led Zeppelin or something that was the uh, on when uh, when her alarm went off. And then my sister and I would argue every morning over who has to shower first, not who gets to, but who has to because the other person gets you know five ten minutes more in their bed. <laughs> So then I would try to go sometimes wake up my sister if we were really getting late in time. It was so funny. Every time I go to wake her up, I should be like, yeah, yeah, I'm getting up. I'm coming. I'll be, I'll be in the shower in five minutes. I'm like, okay, I wait five minutes. She's still asleep. And so then I'm like, well, fine. Then I'll take my shower. So then I take mine. (laughs) And then after she's like, Oh, you jerk. Why didn't you wake me up? Like I did wake you up and you even spoke to me with words. And that's the really cool thing about sleep. (laughs) So when we're sleeping, um, like I mentioned, our our conscious mind is asleep with us and our, our subconscious mind is not. But also, especially in the morning hours, because we're in lighter sleep in the morning and in certain parts of REM, so when we're in REM, our body's functions are more like we're awake. So our our temperature and our heartbeat and our brain waves is is much more like the wake. And if it's especially coming towards the morning hours, you would naturally wake up. If you're if you're naturally waking up, if you're not waking up to an alarm, (laughs) then you're waking up in in a dream and you you have thoughts as you're waking up. You might be aware of your dream if you're waking up naturally you're more likely to be aware of your dream but you'll see that someone when they're starting to wake up you can talk to them and they'll respond to you but they might be awake and they might not be awake (laughs) because it depends on how close to actually being awake they are so there might be a little bit of, of conscious mind interacting there when we want to remember our dreams and we're awake and we're aware of our dream in order to remember that dream more or to practice lucid dreaming and play with it you need to interact your conscious mind with your subconscious so you need to consciously think about that dream otherwise it's gone in a moment because the dream was coming from the yes. conscious. Yeah, if you don't write it down right away or replay it in your head or tell someone about it, sometimes within two seconds, it's gone. Now, I just had an interesting thought, um, and I'm going to ask it to you before I forget. With sleeping, now I've had, and I'm sure a lot of people do, we have very vivid uh, dreams where we either solve a problem that we're we're working on um, Mm -hmm. in real life, and it may not work the same way in real life, but you may end up coming out with a solution why does the body why does the body do that to you uh because if if i want to be successful in real non-sleepy time um don't give me an answer that i can't use uh you know (laughs) realm that doesn't work for me you know why why does the body do that well okay so your conscious mind is the mind where everything has to be reasonable and make sense and fit into the the schema of your life or the you know the ideas that you have about yourself and and the way that your life is and the society that you're fitting into and all of those things and the subconscious mind when you're awake your conscious mind is filtering the subconscious so that okay if you're in a creative mode, um, you can allow your conscious mind to take a back seat a little bit. You can practice that, let your creativity come through. But when you're asleep, your conscious mind is off and your subconscious mind gets to play like it doesn't get to play when you're awake. And the subconscious mind is so, so creative. And you'll see that, for example, like you said, when you are aware of a dream, you can see it has to do with your real life. Something from your real life is coming up in the dream, but there will be maybe weird people in the dream or a weird situation or you're wearing something really weird or the like you said the the solution to the problem is something really creative and strange (laughs) and the subconscious isn't filtered by our conscious mind when we're asleep so Mm -hmm. that's where a lot of creative ideas happen and that is why sleep this is almost the most important thing for entrepreneurs okay (laughs) this one moment there you go everybody coming back around here we are right here listen up pen and paper yeah entrepreneurs are using their creativity to come up with solutions to solve problems 
to to create more money making opportunities to grow their business but the reason why it's fun doing it as an entrepreneur is because you get to be creative you get to do it your way and without sleep or without adequate sleep you are not as creative because you're not giving your subconscious mind enough time to sort through all of your creative ideas unfiltered by your by your conscious mind in sleep the first approximately five hours is where you get most of your deep sleep and okay there's a lot happening in our sleep it's not just awake or sleep Um, in sleep there's two categories there's rapid eye movement and there's non-rapid eye movement Um, in the non-rapid eye movement or NREM um, you have different stages so we can go through the stages quickly So stage one is sort of your gateway into sleep from wakefulness. And this is where when you're falling asleep, you can still have some awareness of your hearing. You might still have some awareness of what's going on around you, but your body is very relaxed. Your breathing and your heart rate have started relaxing. Your body temperature is lowering a little bit and your thoughts are going off on sort of weird dreamlike tangents. So this is where if you're aware in this moment, you're like, oh, I'm falling asleep. And sometimes people don't know the difference between when they're in stage one sleep and when they're awake. And a cool kind of trick to play with is if you sit up and you're sleepy and you sit up and either you can just do nothing and relax or you can occupy your mind a little bit and do a body scan paying attention to all different parts of the body until you start to fall asleep but you're sitting up so the moment that you start to fall asleep you might not be aware of it in your mind but your head will flop over and and you see like you see this you see your partner on the couch you see them when they say they're awake watching something with you but they've they're falling asleep or you watch a little kid in their car seat their head flops over so you can do this to yourself just sit up and wait until the moment where you start flopping over and you're like oh i was just asleep for a split second but you mm. don't really really notice it and then that stage once you're in stage one that's about 10 minutes then you get into stage two which is about 20 minutes and in stage two it's still light sleep but it's really really important light sleep because this is where your brain is experiencing something called sleep spindles and this is taking things from your short-term memory and deciding what would go in long-term memory and what's not important so for instance if you have a really important presentation or a test or you're performing in a play or something in the evening and you're going over all of your notes and you're practicing in the morning having a short nap 25 minutes or less just so you can get you can get some stage two sleep will help solidify some of that important information into your memory yes but you don't want to sleep for more than 25 minutes because then you risk getting into deep sleep and then if you wake up from a nap in deep sleep you're going to feel pretty crappy and groggy and weak and you're just going to want to keep sleeping so Don't do that to yourself. But what happens after lunch with the turkey sandwich I just ate? What options do I have? I'm going to end up in a food coma sleep. I mean, you know, it's... Yeah, that that's a whole that's a whole topic. <laughs> I'm yeah. just saying, not not playing devil's advocate here, but also kind of sort of a little bit. Yeah. It's difficult, you know. If I, I've worked with a company where you know you you, you have lunch, a very uh, light lunch, uh, excuse me, very light breakfast, and you have it late, uh, one of your first breaks, and then lunchtime comes around, and you have yourself a somewhat I don't want to say sizable meal, but you know a sandwich or something, and then you're like, yeah. I'm done for the rest of the day. You know, I don't want to be. I'm not lazy, but um, yeah, very hard to keep this face uh, away from this table uh, right now. Yes. So that's natural. Um, That's part of our circadian rhythm. We have naturally built into our circadian rhythm, a dip in cortisol after lunch and any, um, any cultures who have siesta built into their culture, that's when it is, you know, businesses will be closed from one until four or one until five or something like that because people go home they have a meal they sleep they get up again and they continue with their day wait 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 wait, wait, wait. Hold, hold on and, and they and they th- this is a real business thing that people do 
Yeah. So oh, I'm in the wrong business. I, I, oh, I, hold on a second. I got to check my visa. This is this is this is news to me. OK. All right. So I am not wrong for feeling that way. No, it, it's a little bit. Le it occurs less now in the modern lifestyle, but Spain still has a fairly active siesta siesta culture that's uh, biphasic sleep, cultures who sleep twice per day. But every single human has this where you get more tired after lunch and there are ways around that. But if you want to have a nap, that's where the 25 minute nap restores you so much and you feel fresh after you don't feel groggy. I, not everyone is good at napping. I'm not good at it. If I feel tired and like I want to nap, I'll lie down, I'll be awake and I will just relax. And actually that feels great sometimes if I need it. When I was a teenager, I was a better napper, but that's just because when we're teenagers, we are in our sleep prime of our life. We're so good at it. We need so much of it. If I, I'll continue a little bit on the sleep stages. So then once we're in out of stage two sleep, if you were to sleep for longer than half an hour, you get into deep sleep. And this is where the body is repairing itself. Your brain is actually being washed by synovial fluid removing any inflammation, removing any toxins that got into your brain during the day. Your body's producing human growth hormone, repairing tissue, growing new tissue. If you did a workout, your body's going to work to make your muscles bigger and stronger during this time in case you have to do another workout, right? Mm -hmm. And then you come back up through the stages. And then when you're in in between sleep stages is where you experience REM. And this is where your body, uh, your brain gets to be its super creative, unheld back version of itself. And this is where you're sorting out everything that happened during the day, especially if it was emotional. And this is where your brain is making a picture of your life, including what just happened in that past day, making sense of it. And this part of sleep, the lighter parts of sleep are really, 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 really important for emotional health, for memory, for creativity, for problem solving, conflict resolution. So when we're a busy entrepreneur and we're cutting our sleep short, what we're cutting off of the end of our sleep because your sleep, no matter what time you sleep, it starts at the beginning. It won't start partway through your deep sleep, no matter when you mm. fall asleep. So if you are not getting the length of sleep that your body needs, you are cutting your light sleep, the part that is most important for your creativity, problem solving, for your emotional intelligence, all of those really, really important qualities of a leader or of an entrepreneur. So cutting the last hour or two of your sleep, yeah, it won't be helpful for you <laughs> during the day. Not at all. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. So, so just to roll through the steps, um, can you, can you just name the titles of each step again, just so that the folks listening can write that down and, and notate it? Yeah. So you first fall. So scientists are really creative with the names that they give things. So the first stage is stage one. <laughs> then the second there one is stage two. Yeah. And then stage three and four are bundled into um, a stage that's just called deep sleep now. So three okay. and four are deep sleep. Then you come back up into light sleep into stage two, maybe into stage one, but probably into stage two, then right into REM. That is your rapid eye movement. That's a part of sleep that's really different from stage one through four. That is where you're dreaming very vividly. Your body's functions and chemistry are more like awake. Your heart rate is more like awake. Your temperature is more similar to awake. Your brain activity is more similar to awake. And because of that, your body produces something to paralyze your muscles. Otherwise, you would be acting out your sleep like crazy. <laughs> No, I've done that. That's why I was I was curious as to the steps where that, you know, that, that very I have found myself with movements during sleep uh, are far, e even if I am in, let's say you, you pull your back, you hurt your arm, whatever it is in sleep. Not only are you far more powerful with that response. Yeah. You know, you, you punch a, you know, or kick a, a pillow off the bed or, you know, what grab something, whatever it is, it is very primitive. Uh, in, <laughs> yeah. in, in force, like it's it's like the equivalent of like a gorilla uh, that's that's using your body as like a meat suit, if you will, uh, to to perform the same activities that you normally struggle with <laughs> during your the day. Body is a meat suit. 
Well, I mean, it's not wrong. I mean, I know there's times where I'm like, okay, I can't get up and do whatever. And then literally it's like, no, I'll put this on. I'll show you how to do this. Wham! You know, and it's like, whoa, okay. And I mean, you know, you, you've had other things in your bed that go flying. Um, you've, you've, or if you're at fall asleep on the couch mm -hmm. or, you know, it's a very weird, but, vi and you immediately know when you do it. Um, there was a couple of things that I wanted to uh, touch on here. I don't think we're going to have enough time for this episode to do it, but that's, like I said, what the, the encore is, because we can dig into the meat and potatoes of things. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's interesting, the stages of importance, where you can cut off and, and where it's really not beneficial for you at all, you know, regardless as to where you are personally or professionally and where you are able to regain those memories of things that you're studying for, whether it's a student getting ready for an exam or a, a speech that you've practiced or a presentation, a PowerPoint or sales presentation. You know, I know sometimes it's very muscle, like athletes, you know, it's, it's very much muscle memory mm -hmm. and the brain uh, is no different, uh, apparently when it comes to things that you are studying for. And it's interesting just to hear it. I mean, I, I know that people... Muscle memory is is still the brain, yeah. And I'd say a lot of that is yeah. the subconscious. So there is, there is the phrase, practice makes perfect, right. but it's practice plus sleep that makes perfect. If you practice something over and over again and you don't sleep, there is there's a threshold. You're you're not going to get that much better. But if you practice something and you're learning, say a musician is learning a new piece and they're practicing it mm -hmm. a bunch of times, they're getting better, but they're still making mistakes here and there and maybe each time they practice it they make a different little mistake, then they sleep. The next morning they could get up and play it perfectly. And it's because they practice and they slept because you your subconscious brain needs to put all of that information into all of your past experiences. It needs to integrate it. And you could say it's muscle memory, but I feel like muscle memory comes from the subconscious. So once your subconscious is, has learned something or once your subconscious is okay with the way you resolve something emotional or once your subconscious mind is okay with the amount of money that you're making and the way you're managing your finances things won't keep you up at night whatever is waking you up it, out of stress is because your subconscious mind doesn't feel good about it and you can use your conscious mind to try to reason all the reasons why it's fine. I don't need to open up that conversation again with that person. You know, I don't need to do anything else to resolve that. I don't need to manage my finances better. Or I don't need to make any changes. But if that thing is waking you up at night, what <laughs> you're going to have to change something. It's your subconscious mind telling you, hey, this is really important. Pay attention, pay attention. And that's one of the ways that's one of the compasses in our life. Then you're going to know. And that's when the sleep intervention is necessary from somebody such as yourself. And I, I hate to cut on this point, but I think this is going to be a great uh, segue for folks. Folks listening, we're going to dig more into the details of sleep and some things um, outside of this episode on our Encore episode with Lauren, if you want to check it out. Lauren, do you have anything specific that folks can reach out to you for right now? Like, what are you working on mm -hmm. that, that uh, anybody could take a look at or anything of interest? Yeah, so there's one exciting thing happening is I am uh, co-hosting a 12-day uh, sleep improvement uh, online course. It will be launched tomorrow, I think, if we get all tomorrow. of our ducks in a row being launched tomorrow. So I'm not sure when this podcast episode is coming out, but it will be launched on the 18th. Is that tomorrow? Today's maybe the 18th? Uh, the 19th. Today is the, 18th, the, the 19th. 19th, yes. Yeah, See, November they all 19th. all start to blur together. The, the most important <laughs> thing is that the course starts on December 1st, and then it runs for 12 okay. days. And it includes live sessions with question and answer, and then also a live relaxation experience and then continued learning in uh, in a closed private Facebook group in between. It's going to be really, really reasonably priced. I can't tell you the exact price because we're launching it in the next day or so, but you can find the information about that on my Instagram or my website or my Facebook or my LinkedIn. My LinkedIn is under my name, Lauren DeFell, and everything else is under coaching for insomnia. 
Insomniacs with an S at the end. So my IG and Facebook are at Coaching for Insomniacs. Website is coachingforinsomniacs.com. There you, well, you you killed half of my exit here, but I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll outro you anyway. I'm such um, a nerd. <laughs> I know. This is great. I love a great study. You can reach out to Lauren wherever you check your email or social media. Uh, again, Coaching for Insomniacs with an S on Instagram and Facebook uh, or directly on her website, coachingforinsomniacs.com. So you can sleep a little bit better tonight or tomorrow, next day, next month, next year, whenever. Mm. Lauren DeFell, everybody. Thank you again for stopping in, Lauren. Thank you for having me. It was fun and a pleasure. Yes, ma'am. <laughs>